welcome back to the final of Barber vs Barber. I'm really excited today to see who out of Jack or Ben is going to be crowned the overall winner of this competition. First up, we're going to hear from myself, Kieran and Kem to see what we're going to be looking out for today in the competition. This will be followed up by a little word from our competitors, Ben and Jack. So I'm Miguel, also known as the Normal Barber, and I am the host, I guess, and the creator of Barber vs. Barber. So today I'm just looking to see how the guys present themselves on stage, how they work together, and just, yeah, see some great haircuts. And um, I'm excited to see who we crown the winner of the first season of Barber vs. Barber. Uh, my name's Kem, Clipper Kem on socials, and I'm here to judge the final of Barber vs. Barber. And I'm really looking forward to what these guys are going to bring to the table. Also, I'm looking forward to seeing the demos from the other barbers that are here. Um, and yeah, just, and also educating as well. Just telling a little something about a hair type that I don't think people are that familiar with or are in front of too much. So yeah, it should be good. It should be a good day. Kieran Webb, the London Barber. Um, looking forward to seeing these two. They were probably, they definitely were the two strongest. When I watched, I came and judged obviously the quarters. They were both a part of uh, that day. And I have to say, I'm, I'm really excited because they're both very, very technical, very good at what they do. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing the mixture of the hair cutting from a hairdressing side of things. But I'm also looking forward to seeing their clipper work because they're both really, really good at barbering. So I'm excited for that. It's going to be a good day. Yeah, for sure. My name's Ben. I'm the owner of Vision Barber Shop. Um, I've been cutting hair for 10 years now. A uh, little bit of hairdressing background as well. Did a few years hairdressing. Um, now just predominantly barbering. In the previous rounds, I'd say I was pretty happy with what I did. Um, obviously, doing the competition and stuff, it's new to me anyway. So each round, I'd say my confidence has got a lot, you know, up there. Um, so I'm more than ready for today, really. So I, I, I wasn't going to watch. Um, the other finalists just because I wanted to kind of turn up on the day and then just kind of see who it was and, and run with it but I had a look that it had been aired live so I watched it um, and then before you know it I started checking him out looking on his Instagram and he seems like he's good so it should be a good good competition yeah good final. Uh, yeah so my name is Jack Gunner I'm 21 years old I've been cutting hair for the last five and a half years I'm from London and uh, yeah that's me. Uh, so in the previous rounds, I think the best bits for me were being able to hear things that I don't hear from anyone else. So, you know, hearing what I can improve on as a barber, because everyone just comes in the shop and goes, yeah, nice trim, mate, and they leave. But to have people telling you, you can do this better, and if you do this, you'll improve in this way, uh, it really helps. And just to be surrounded by a group of amazing barbers, like, we're so talented in the UK, and I think that this kind of competition just showcases that. So to be a part of that is amazing. Uh, yeah, I think I watched the semi-final, um, but he's an amazing haircutter. Like he's sick. So I'm I'm just happy to be next to him and happy to be here. Like we're we're both good. We're both we're both barbers and we're both in the final. Like so, what can, what can I say really? Uh, so we are here for the final of Barber vs Barber. We have Jack and Ben here and they're going to be competing so we're just going to go over a few things that we're going to be uh, looking out for today. So we're going to have the judges, uh, Kieran, uh, Pete's going to come down as well hopefully and then Kem. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different to, to the first two rounds that we did. Um, we're not going to speak to you at all so we really need to, you to kind of take the uh, make the effort and you know vocalize what you're actually doing throughout the haircuts any products you're using the tools you're using speakers if you're on stage and i want you to think about working together you know by kind of handing over to each other um asking each other what each of you are doing almost like working like a team um so yeah we're just going to kind of take a step back and just watch how you perform as if you are performing to an audience so um that's the, the best piece of advice I can give is just like give it your all. Um, think about all the technical aspects of haircutting while you're going through it and uh, just enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah. So here we have it, the final of Barber versus Barber. The Barbers are going to take the initiative today and they will be judged mostly on their presentation and education methods. 
So welcome back to Barber vs Barber. <laughs> you're in the finals. Uh, we already spoke about what you're going to be um, experiencing today. So we're not going to be asking you questions. We just want you to talk us through the whole haircut. Talk us about what you're doing, um, product use, anything like that. Um, got all the judges back from both episodes so far. So um, any words of advice? Good luck. Enjoy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, enjoy the experience. Remember, you know what you're doing, and just uh, have fun with it. Yeah, be fearless, believe in yourself, like I said last time. So inspiring. Uh, so yeah, when you're ready, go. Cool. All right. So firstly, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Jack Gunnar, 21 years old, from London, um, and today I'm going to be doing a taper and one and a half with the grain. Try and preserve any waves that are left in there, but I know he hasn't been brushing, so. Don't know what's going to happen there, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so my name's Ben Duffy. Um, we're going to be doing on Luke a mid skin fade with like a little bit of a crop on top. Um, doing some different techniques, a bit of texturing. Um, and then, yeah, it's us. So first I'm going to remove the bulk um, to get a little bit of shape in before we Put the skin line in. Um, there we are. Cool, so I've combed his hair out. I've made sure that everything is ready for me to cut. And something that I want to be conscious of is firstly where the pump is, and secondly, where his crown is. Because if I was to come through this in the wrong direction, it's going to make his crown look really thin and everything else is going to look really dark and everything's going to be imbalanced. So I want to make sure I'm traveling with the grain in every direction in which the hair is going. So what I'll do is I'm going to leave this area of the crown and probably go with a longer guard just to make sure that it's not too low. Uh, and yeah, so I'll just start now. So we're just using the one and a half guard um, to kind of create a little bit of a shape of um, before I put the skin line in, so where I'm kind of going to go up to. Um, and doing this, it just allows you to kind of put a clean line in, so if the hair's quite long and bulky before then, you can get rid of this and then your lines are nice and clean. Um, just skin out. Cool. So when I said I was going to a longer guard, what I'm doing is using a one and a half guard fully open. Everything else is at a 1.5 with the grain, which would make it more or less a two, because um, it's always slightly longer when you go with the grain as you're traveling with the direction of the hair. Um, so yeah, just do that round the crown. So if you see on the back, I've not gone too, too high with the skin. Although we're doing a bit of a tight fade, I think it's nice to leave a little bit of weight here on this crown, because um, I think it grows out better. Um, and just gives a nicer look to the to the haircut. So I like to just keep a little bit more shape around this back bit, a little bit of a dip that goes without the curvature of the head. Cool, so now we've got the hair down to a level where it's, it's easier, uh, we're going to start putting in our lines for our taper. But what we're going to do is we're going to slightly arch this uh, into more of like an end, end shape. So we can keep the darkness in the front and the darkness behind the ear, but the taper can still be stretched and be nice and fresh. And then through the back, we're going to do more of like, like a U shape. So it will still be, it'll be sort of lighter in the corners, but when it's shaped up, it will look nice and then just keep a bit more here. So you'll see over there that Ben is foil shaving his client. With Shaq, we're not going to do that because what happens with Afro hair if you foil it, is the hair will grow back inside of the skin or you take the risk. It doesn't always happen, but because the hair is curly, when it grows back, it will curl back into the skin and become an ingrown hair, or he could bump up, um, which usually only happens with Afro hair. And it's just very uncomfortable when you have to get it treated afterwards. So always stay away from using the foils with Afro hair for sure. So all I'm doing is just making sure any hairs by the ear around the perimeters are just laid down properly, nice and flat. So when I'm putting my guidelines in, I'm not getting too confused with any bulky bits of hair. So I'm just going to set up a template for me to start with my guidelines for my taper. 
I'm just using my one and a half guard open. So this will match perfectly into the 1.5 with the grain that I did, as I said before, that it was practically more or less a two. So this is a lower two, so it would just meet with it perfectly. So here with Luke, now we've put the skin line in. Um, I'm just using the number two guide. So to, which if, sometimes a lot of barbers will fear they'll go straight in with a one and a half, but I feel like if you do the two, you can kind of keep that little bit of weight and keep the balance there, and then you can kind of you know, connect it in and not take, it's quite easy to take away that weight straight away. Um, and then I'm just going to work down through the guides, a little bit of that old school fading instead of going up with your heart and then knocking that out. I'm just going to go all the way down through the guides and get that nice blurred effect on it. Cool. So to start off my fading process, I've just started with a 0.5. And what I'm going to do is close my lever halfway in between, which will make it a 0.25, and then all the way, which is a zero. I like to get this line out first because I always find the bottom line is the biggest problem area in cutting hair. A lot of people, they'll do their whole fade, they'll get to the end, and then they're like, why is this bottom line still here? Like, if you deal with that first, then you can focus on everything else and make sure everything is refined to how you want it to look. Now, if you notice, what I'm doing with my guards is I'm following the same shape in which I did with my skin line. The reason being is I want to keep this darkness here. His hair's quite light. If I don't keep this darkness here, when I shape around the ear, it's going to start to look like he's bald here for, for no reason whatsoever. But being conscious, hair is all about visual. So you need to look at it and get an understanding of what is going to make things look right. So even though I'm at 0.5 here and here might be a one and a half, if visually it looks correct, that's what matters. Sometimes you have to not focus on what's technically correct and vi what's visually correct. So to catch you up, I've done a 1.5 and a 1, and then now just to soften this line in between, what I'm going to do is use my 0.5 guard and just play in between the like halfway close and all the way open, just to make sure that this transition is fully smooth before working on this top area here. With Luke here, now we've done the one and a half guard, we're going to start using the one. Um, but a nice little technique that I like to do is start when you use it when you get down past below the one and a half guard is to start using your corners of the blade of the clipper because um, sometimes if you go straight in you can start to put lines and stuff in so it's like corner picking if you see there I'm just using the corner just to get rid of that weight and just kind of personalise a nice little blade out there on it so what I'm doing with Luke here now so I'm happy with the sides just going to take some sections here to connect this top in um, so we're doing a crop cut on the top, so it's all one length, so it's like a uniform layer. Um, so we're going to get this length in and then do a little bit of texturing. Bit of um, channel cutting just to put some more, more texture through it and then we're going to diffuse it to add a little bit of a different look to it. So with the top, just going to go crossways with sections. Sometimes I'll go horizontal, um, just depending really. I like doing it this way because it's, you can get a nice little look on. I think sometimes when you're doing, cutting straight down, you can kind of get lost. Um, whereas this is my old school way of coming through. So and I'm just cutting the hair, not too blunt. So leaving it a little bit of texture, a bit of point cutting to avoid cool. them scissor lines on it. So a little tip to get the front of Afro hair a little sharper is combing all of these hairs over and where you can see them overlapping, just nipping those hairs with a razor blade. I feel like it's a minor little adjustment, but sometimes it can help you get the bits that the trimmer just can't. And it just helps to make that look that little bit crispier. That's time. Well done. Thank you, done, boys. <laughs> so you can enjoy the rest of the event mm -hmm. now, and then uh, we'll find out later who's won. Nice. Come I mean, I can have a beer now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beer time.
And there we have it, the final of Barber vs. Barber. Just now we're going to see some of the Barbers who demo throughout the day, and then we're going to go to the judges to see who we thought won Barber vs. Barber. <music> had to leave because he had to get his son a little earlier than expected so it's just myself and Kieran and Kem are going to go over what we thought of the haircuts and who we think should win Boba versus Boba so what do you guys think? So we had to stop ourselves from talking a minute ago but what were you just going to say Kieran about? Because uh, it is really close right? It is for me it's one of the closest little competitions you'll ever see. Yeah. You've got two guys they're both very very technical they both did a great haircut they both spoke really well it's really, really hard to choose. My criticisms of Jack, if I had any, was just that during his presentation stuff, I saw his back a lot. Oh yeah, and I, I saw did, that. I didn't see, and he, okay, so this is maybe a bit of an experience of doing stage work, that he stood in the same spot, mm. and he even mentioned and noted that you know you stay in the same spot for lighting purposes and all those things, which is great. You can do that in a shop environment. But you can't do that on stage because yeah. if you do that on stage, the people to your right hand side have got your back, and the people to your left hand side can see what you're doing haircut wise. You have to consistently move on mm -hmm. stage in order to be able to yeah, keep an audience and, yeah. Yeah, people know what and keep do. everyone engaged, right? Just like you were doing during your own yeah, yeah. demonstrations. So for me, I would take points off for that. Um, for Ben's side of things, I don't feel like he had as well spoken mm. as Jack and so that would be my criticism of him he wasn't able to actually sort of how to put it he wasn't able to break down what he was doing as well and give a thorough mm. assessment to us of you know, each step and as he was going through it and I feel like his haircut it was great he did really the, the fade was lovely mm. there were some weight spots and bits and bobs but I think that's just nerves and, and whatnot. but time yeah, for sure. What, what about you two? What do you reckon? Where's your heads at on it? What's your full process? I think for myself, like similar to what you said, Jack showed his back a lot. Mm. Like, like if I was sitting two two seats down, I wouldn't have saw most of the haircuts. Yeah. Um, I love these uh, how he articulates what he does. He took that upon himself to really explain every every single step. I feel like Ben did it quite well from the midpoint midpoint onwards. Um, but obviously with a bit more nerves attached mm. to it, yeah, sure. just generally. Um, but I do feel like he, I mean, he didn't have much time to talk about what he was doing on top as much because he, he left that to last uh, and he did it in like five minutes. But yeah. um, I think it's really tough in terms of like execution of haircuts and how it ended up being. I think what Jack did on stage with the afro was, <coughs> was amazing. Like that's not an easy thing to do, to go on stage cut afro hair and you say that you say that because you're not familiar with it he's quite familiar with afro hair sure but so i mean to demonstrate it if, i think if you're familiar with the hair type it's all it's all relative right but yeah. from where we were sitting and we were sitting in the audience right watching as if the rest of the crowd we were in a you know particularly advantaged spot even though we were front row whatever we were still sort of from a from an audience perspective which was which was great because we it's a fair judgment point like that um from where we were sitting Jack all day for me yes his back was to us but I like the fact that he went on to explain why he was stood in one position for most of it um, and in terms of just because both of them are good at they're both sick barbers they're both really good like both haircuts for it for the time scale were as good as each other they really were when I got a little bit closer I'd have to go with Ben haircut wise I think it was just a little bit more refined for the time. Um, I think there were a few things um, Jack missed out as I got closer to that haircut that he could have just done that he didn't do, whether it was time or... No, not just dealing with, just dealing with the hair yeah. type. 
so it could have just done with another pass over there was no scissor work there which is a done thing with sort of it wasn't a super low cut it was like a one mm. with with the grain which is kind of like a two so you do generally go over with scissors over that just a thing or even use a foil shaver just to kind of skim over and get those little fine hairs um the fade wasn't as clean when you got a bit closer so from a clo from a close up i'd have to say ben from an audience perspective i'd have to say jack because he explained it much better he articulated himself like in in a much better way um especially if he was actually on a stage like if he was representing me or my company and he was on stage like you know i, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry at all yeah i wouldn't worry yeah, at all like, sure. because people 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 watching from an audience aren't getting as close as what we did at the end so for for what he did the standard at which he did it and the way that he's talked through the talked through the haircut was like 10 10 whereas ben not so much even though the haircut was actually a bit better he he didn't really explain too much he kind of needed propped in I, I also like the way that jack was talking to him as well it was nice like you can see that maybe he's done it before or he's just a little bit more natural with it on stage despite the fact he had his back to the audience sometimes yeah. which it happens it happens especially when you haven't got a mirror you do find yourself standing in front of the client a little bit more than what you usually would so it's a real tough one man <laughs> i don't i don't know like like i say from from the seat <clears throat> Jack, up close, Ben is like... So, <laughs> let's think about it from this point of view. If we go through all of the rounds that we watch them in, mm. and we like calibrate them all together, and we really think about it, I would say that Jack won, as a competition, if that makes sense. I think what he, he did in the first round that we watched him, like I said, I thought he was the most technical on that day, mm. and he was, even though he cut himself. He pulled it back. What yeah. I mean by that is like that sometimes is like a big throw. You're like, oh, I've cut myself, and then you're starting to panic on stage because there's blood, and you're thinking, oh, what do I do? He composed himself. He got it back. Bang! He made a great haircut, and we were really impressed with that one. From watching the video, he did a really great job talking about, you know, triangulating his shape and why he kept it was longer on one side than the other, and the reasons for that was. Yeah, I mean, if, if I was to go back through and look at him as a consistent competitor, and then with today, even though he did have his back to me on stage, that's, you know, something you can adjust. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that he was the strongest competitor in this competition overall. And if I had to give it to someone on the tiniest of point, I'd give it to Jack. That's just my thought process at this point. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of torn, but uh, when you break it down like that, it, it does start to make sense. I do think that Ben did a little, something a little bit different in the last round with a bit of longer lengths, yeah. um, whereas we haven't seen really much l many longer lengths with Jack's haircuts. A little bit on the top last time, but but not Showed really. His clipper works mainly. Yeah, mostly his clipper work. So Ben was more versatile. Yeah, Ben, I think, for yeah, each round. Longer. Yeah. yeah, a longer length, yeah. curtains, and then a skin yeah. sk across. You've just, you've just went, tap the pin and just throw the thumb in the middle again now. Now I'm like, like, oh, yeah, of course you did. Yeah. If we were judging purely on haircuts, I'd probably have to give it to Ben each and every round. Because the competition has changed in terms of how we're judging, and how that was structured now with us sitting in the audience and it not being a, you know, a tally box that we're checking, mm. uh, checking each box for, you know, this, 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 this. It was more of an overall demonstration and it kind of turned into like a, you know, a stage competition almost, which is a massive part of being a barber. So it's good that it changed like that. I'd have to give it to Jack, man. Even though I feel like that haircut was maybe a little bit more refined for the time. Um, I don't think we can solely judge of which haircut was better. Yeah, like, I don't not think today. That's, yeah, I don't think that's... It's, that would be impossible to do because it would be a draw. It would be a draw. Yeah. If you were basing just off trips, yeah, it would be a draw. Mm. So Jack's the winner? I think so. I think so, man. I think we have to be honest and say that he, he won. Black holes. It was between them. It literally is though. Every round, it's been like so difficult to call between because it's yeah, so many good barbers in there. Yeah, but this is. I'm not thing. saying that's a problem. No, no, no. But yeah. I think I think that's where this this round um, yeah. differed. 
yeah. because it wasn't just about a haircut, was it? It, it was about the journey. It, no, well, it was about understanding what you had to do yeah. on, t- on the day, which is present a, present a thing. That's the whole reason you had a live yeah. studio audience, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was to get, add that pressure and add that add that element of being like the person has to be able to explain yeah. mm. what they're doing and not just do a good trim with headphones on. Like there was, there was the dimensions completely changed today. Yeah, because in the last round, when I and he rose it, to it. Yeah, he when you said about the headphone thing not being on, like it was like deer in headlights for a lot of them, mm. and not for Jack. Mm. He was ready for that. Yeah, and he, I felt like today he he demoed. He didn't completely. Yeah, he rose demoed. to it, man. Yeah, yeah completely. He kind of just stood on stage and was like, I was thinking, you're talking as if you're a full fledged educator, and that was yeah. great. I just. That that inexperience of turning the model as you're cutting on stage to show the audience, that's easily ironed yeah. out and it's mm-hmm. not really a big deal. Everything else, I would say he really nailed. Yeah. He did a great job. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go watch the guys downstairs and then uh, we'll announce the winner. Okay. So we have come to the end of our journey and this is the final of Barber versus Barber. So I'm going to let the guys kind of briefly go over what they liked about the, the haircut today and what they didn't like and... And we will announce the winner. You mean to go first? Go for okay. Yeah. Um, Benjamin, I thought you did a fantastic job. I think you've been a super strong competitor throughout this whole entire thing. And I think once again today you proved just how strong you are at barbering and you really showcased some amazing skills and your fade was, I was going to swear, really, really good. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and I was, I'm, I'm, I've been blown away this, this whole competition by the, the level of talent and stuff that's on the show and you know you guys have really killed it so well done mate you Thank did a you, great yeah. job um, Mr Jack fantastic mate that it takes a, a lot of uh, cojones to stand on stage and in my opinion do afro hair not in Kem's because Kem's used to it but uh, for me to take on that type of hair texture on stage is, is sometimes a risk and you took that risk and you did a fantastic job of it so well done, I thought you spoke really well and I thought you did a, a fantastic job with your cut. Thanks mate. Yeah, I think I agree with Kieran, I think both of you have been huge competitors in this game and it's, uh, it's been really, really hard to judge because haircut wise they're both almost flawless considering the time scale that you got given, the pressure in terms of like being on stage and I know for both of you it's kind of like a first time for that kind of thing, um, so well done to both. Um, it's been really hard. It's been really, really hard. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, I'll let, um, let Miguel deliver the news. Uh, yeah, so I won't go over too many of the negatives because you'll well, get to see that on the video, but we spent a good 10, 15 minutes talking about uh, who was going to win on stage. And uh, I think you both did incredible across the three rounds. I mean, you got to the final, so um, you should be proud of yourselves in, in that sense anyway. Um, but in terms of just what today was about um, and what the challenge was that was put in front of you today uh, in terms of communicating and stuff like that, uh, while you both did excellent, uh, we have chosen the winner and the winner is going to be Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, Thank you, brother. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well done, Bro, you did such yeah, a yeah. good job. Well done, man. Nice yeah. one. Thank you, mate. Thanks very much. I'm doing uh, the same thing I did in the last one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's so, it's so tough to call at these competitions because uh, so many people are, are so close in, in different aspects. And, um, yeah, it's been a fun competition and it's been a pleasure to be on this journey yeah. with you. So, thank you for thank you, yeah. competing. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. You're both winners. You so You're both winners. Everyone's a winner here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you for watching the final of Barber vs. Barber. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys again. Thanks. Nice one. Thank And there we have it. Our season one of Barber vs. Barber is over. Jack Gunner is the winner, so congratulations to him. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to our sponsor, Statement Grooming Goods, and we will hopefully catch you here for season two.